I've made it clear I have a venomous hatred of elves. Every elf in seemingly every setting. And I've said it a thousand times and I'll say it a thousand more times. In fact, I plan on saying it a thousand times today. Let's go over all my spite with elves. I'll go into every single elf from all settings I can think of here. I'll admit, I'll dip into some pseudo-elves too. Some things you can argue aren't elves at all. So, let's go into to this list. Right here, I'll explain how I'm going to go through it. First, you'll see a big black screen giving the setting. I'll talk about the elves history, their mechanics in the setting or game or whatever, and their average personalities. I will also dip into the aesthetic in some cases, though some really depend on the setting itself, so some I'll skip over. I'll go into each elf for about 5 to 10 minutes more or less, meaning this video will be long. Hell, it's April 1st, so there will be a lot of me joking and a lot of me going off the rails with this. I am literally recording, editing, and affixing this together in pieces. Me talking here is but the first piece of this long ass video. I'll probably do some other things to spice it up. Maybe a few hidden jokes on the screen, perhaps give myself ears? Uh, no, no I won't. Maybe? Now, as I stated, this is gonna be in pieces. This part of my script is being written a week before Christmas in December, so the settings and elves will be added to in the future as I write and record each part. I can't even guarantee each part will be scripted. Some elves I am just very passionate about my hatred of. Of course, I should probably explain the history of my hatred of elves. Let's start with, with the beginning. I remember growing up and being called a Christmas elf because I was very small and had weird deformity where one of my ears would come to a point while the other was pretty rounded off. My ears stopped pointing after I hit puberty, but a lot of things reformed at that point, but ask your parents about that. I hated it, but those nicknames lost power over me for a while. It wasn't very long, because then I got into World of Warcraft. I got into that game in high school, probably junior high. I first played it simply from free trials and had fun. Played a Tarn Druid as my first character. Eventually got my own full-fledged account and kept up with the Tarn Druid, becoming a raider, tanking in Cataclysm and beyond. But at that time I started raiding, I also learned the story and became a role player. I read the story behind Warcraft 1, 2, and 3, World of Warcraft Classic, Burning Crusade, and Lich King, and I experienced Cataclysm myself and through when I quit about two patches into Legion, I think? I learned the story backwards and forwards, and that is the beginning of my venom against elves. Every time I tried to play an elf, their story just made me hate them more. And after that, I got Steam. I started playing more video games. First came, I think, Sticks, Master of Shadows, maybe? I like how the story makes those elves. It makes sense. But the elves themselves, I hate so much. But we'll get into that in a few chapters. After that, I think... I think it was Dragon Age on the PlayStation 4? Inquisition, specifically. My hatred for elves was established before that. In all honesty, I can't remember the order of when things came, but I'm essentially just telling you what all I'll be bitching about in this lengthy video. So, what have we got in the list so far? Warcraft Elves, which branch into Night Elves, High Elves, Blood Elves, and Fell Blood Elves, Void Elves, Highborn Elves, and even more, uh, with the motherfucking trolls somehow. And we've got Styx, which has two elves, but both can be put under a single branch, given I've not finished Shards of Darkness to know the story behind the Dark Elves. We've got Dragon Age, which I don't think has subtypes of elves, but they do have multiple cultures since, and since it's Inquisition, you know I'll be talking about the most annoying character in that franchise, goddammit, I hate her so much. The Witcher is also in my list. 
Those elves are a very special case because I can talk about the show, the book, and the video games. And because I've seen and read and played all of them, oh boy. Do I have a lot to talk about with them? Then we've got Tolkien Elves, which branch into High Elves, Wood Elves, and maybe Orcs, all of which have problems both similar and tied together, but very different. I can talk about the movies and the books, but the movies combine two into one elf type, so I'll be talking more about the book versions. Then there's Elder Scrolls, my god! How many fucking elves do you need? Let's get into their elf list. Playable elves are High Elves, Wood Elves, Dark Elves, Orcs, and arguably the Half-Elf Bretons. Then you've got the non-playable elves, Dwarves, Tropic Elves, Snow Elves, which branch into Falmer and a lot more because most don't appear in the mainline games, just in books in the games. Unless you play online, which has a bunch of them. This part will probably be the longest. I can argue as well that the Wyverians from Monster Hunter. I know they're not actually elves, they're more like mammal-reptile hybrids. But they have long-ass ears, long-ass lives, and a long-ass story that makes me dislike them. Now, moving into tabletop games, we've got D&D. Eberron has a metric shit ton of elves, including the fact that half-elves in Eberron count as their own subspecies of elf in both lore and mechanics. Then there's Faerun, who tend to be just angry assholes. Dark Sun has more, as does Dragonlance and Greyhawk, and so many more. Some of these settings I don't even fucking know of, because they're tie-ins to other games entirely. I don't know if I'll be combining these together or make their own part each. We'll see as I get to it. How about Warhammer? We've got Warhammer Fantasy and Age of Sigmar, both all combined together into one. Then we got Warhammer 40,000 Horus Heresy. Again, both will be combined into one. And before anyone dares tell me the Eldari aren't elves, even the writers call them space elves. Go fuck yourself. Shadowrun has elves, though their story is sort of weird, as they tend to gain special privileges into shit. This part will likely dip into the Netflix movie Bright because you cannot convince me Bright isn't based off of Shadowrun. Try as you might, you can't convince me. Not a snowball's chance in hell that you can. Now, this is just what I can come up with off the top of my head. As I go into recording these parts and writing more parts, I'll figure out more and more. So, let's get into this absolute Bullshit that is elves of various different settings. World of Warcraft. I've got some personal beef with this game, setting, and story. I hate what Blizzard Activision did to one of the few things I can remember of my uncle. Now, in order to understand why I hate these bastards, I have to start with the creation of that fucking world. Azeroth was built by some star dudes left it, who left it alone and came back to give some power to dragons who decided to then fuck off and just let things happen. The trolls decided to drink some from a giant source of pure, raw, uncontrolled magic, mutating to have longer lifespans, stand up straight, and lose their pupils. I am not joking there! These newly formed elves became the Highborn Elves, and they grew addicted to eating magic. They became so addicted that when the literal well started talking to them and offering them coke, they accepted. This caused a civil war, which led to multiple things happening. That giant-ass well decided to fuck off into the center of the planet, destroying a huge portion of said planet but somehow leaving random-ass islands in the middle of a constantly turning storm because MMO still needs DLCs. Lead to elves voting on a monarch once and then never again, and those dragons that fucked off, they looked at the winners of the Civil War and said, here's a magic tree, have fun with immortality because that's not a problem right there. So, what happened to the losers? Well, 
Some struck a deal with a, a literal ocean and became snakes. Some were exiled to the east and became high elves. And some fucked themselves and went southeast, stayed addicted to magic. And then both of those got fucked by a thousand different things. The winners of the Civil War decided to rename themselves to the Night Elves, told the sun to go shove it so far up its ass it could taste it. The Night Elves then created a caste system where only men could be druids and only women could be, um, everything else, really. The Nelfs, as they're referred to, started talking to giant cowmen, telling them that they were gods, decided to take 10,000 year long nap, and that nap let them look at the blueprints for the world and let them redesign it. This led to everything breaking, one guy deciding to grow a big fucking tree, which became their home. And you know those cows? Yeah, those cows were the original druids. When the cows started doing nature magic on Azeroth, the night elves tried to genocide them. This lasted until their literal nature god came around and told them to fucking stop. Oh, and this led to some of them getting so pissed off, they started worshipping literal fire. And I haven't even talked about the sub-factions of Nelfs that decided to gouge their own eyes out and become a hell half-breeds. Those that went to the east became the High Elves, they made allies with their new human neighbors, teaching them about magic, while still eating magic, often pulling it right from the bodies of sentient magic. They were so addicted that some of them began to reverse mutate into weird-looking horror shows. Then some more demons started coming around because all the magic being used. Yeah, they knew demons were attracted to magic and they decided they still wanted to overuse the arcane. So what happened at this point? Well, demons killed humans, demons decided to turn dead into undead, the undead decided to gain fucking free will and went after the elves. At this point, humans are fighting on three fronts. The high elves decided to leave the human alliance and join those demons they were just fucked by. This turned them into blood elves who are now getting fucked by trolls into... God, Oblivion, really. Their king fucks off, and their regent king decides to join the orcs. The OG king decides to double down on the bad magic, become a fell blood elf, and it leads to all of them becoming psychopaths. You fucking lost yet? Well, next part is actually going to be a lot shorter. Void elves just devolved and evolved back and forth, depending on how much crack they get. No, seriously. It was at the point in playing WoW, I realized I don't have fun and ended my subscription. Getting on the game to collect flowers to feed those addicted assholes, it just wasn't good. And I don't know if there's anything more. Now each elf has a sub-race too. None are good if you ask me. WoW is trying to be Final Fantasy XIV here with the two sub-races per race. Now you know the story. Let's talk about their mechanics. Fuck them. Night Elves in lore, they turn invisible if they stay still for too long, while the Blood Elves just remove buffs from enemies around them. In all honesty, the racial abilities are forgettable, but these two can actually be useful in PvP if they w actually worked. I'm certain their sub-races have abilities too, but WoW always has a problem where the ability score increases, defensive abilities are such forgettable nonsense if you make it past the classic slash cataclysm zones. So what are their personalities? These elves are the start and the continuation for all problems on Azeroth world, right? So they have to be humble, down to earth, understanding, and repent, right? Right? Remember how I said the Night Elves tried to genocide the cows for growing flowers? They tried to do the same thing with orcs for needing uh, to build houses out of wood. They also tried to genocide the trolls for the same things as the uh, Tauren. 
and did genocide one type of troll for talking to snakes. Their queen was voted into office 10,000 years prior to the first game's setting. Her husband decided to go to bed and didn't wake up until the cataclysm. And her brother-in-law was the BBEG of the first DLC. Yeah, remember that faction that cut out their eyes to become half-breed demons? Yeah! That's her husband's baby bro. Night Elves will look at their history and it of attempted genocide, bad mistakes, stupid decision, which include making werewolves a problem, burning their source of power, baiting demons into the world, multiple uh, attempted genocides, and more, and still think they're the only ones allowed to have an opinion. What about the Blood Elves? Well, they caused another demon invasion, have a massive coke addiction issue, and swapped sides at least three times, have personal beef with their grandparents, who they kept needing to call for help against, accidentally started the Undead Scourge and created the Forsaken Faction that they're allied with, and several other things. What are they like? Well, their leader is actually very repentant. He essentially is trying to pawn off his job onto literally anyone else, but literally every character in the starting zone for Blood Elves, needs to get a rock to the skull. So, how about High Elves? Some High Elves remain allied with the Alliance, so they can't be called all bad, right? Well, the ones you see are usually from the same family, who hate each other, have attempted assassinations on their allies and family, have made some mixed-breed children that then abandon them, and then go on to an alternate dimension for absolutely zero reason. I hate Warcraft Elves so much. Everything is their fault, and they blame everyone else for it. But let's move on to the next one. Warhammer is a difficult one for me here. There are multiple games in the Warhammer franchise, from Warhammer Fantasy, Age of Sigmar, now Old World, which is kind of AOS with a fantasy skin, Horus Heresy, 40k, and Blood Bowl. There are also spin-off games, Underworld, Necromunda, Kill Team, and a few others I don't recall. Elves are in all of them, and I do consider the Eldari to be part of the umbrella term of Elf. Even Games Workshop calls them Space Elves. But with that admitted, I don't really like Age of Sigmar, so I don't know enough about elves in that setting. They were sort of absorbed from fantasy into Sigmar as part of chaos, death, destruction, and order factions, but I'll talk about what I know about them. It seems that the AOS and 40k elves follow a similar path. They were brought into the world by the old ones, but the reason is different in each world. In AOS, they were thrown here in preparation for coming chaos. In 40k, they were built by warp creatures of the same name to fight other things that the old ones made. In 40k, they won the war, but also lost, and their enemy went into hibernation, so they just chilled and formed an empire. In Age of Sigmar, they prepared and fought Chaos when it came around, and taught dwarves and humans, who were also made by old ones, how to fight Chaos. In 40k, the dwarves are a subspecies of human, but that's a whatever thing. Stouts are cool, stop screwing them, GW. Next thing that happened in AOS timeline is actually pretty similar to 40k, but not exactly. In 40k, the Eldar got so comfy that they got bored and started doing crazy ass shit, thinking there'd be no repercussions for fucking murdering, killing, and other things that I'm not comfortable talking about, birthing the Chaos God Slaanesh. In Age of Sigmar, there was a cult formed called the Pleasure Cult, and they did the same thing and birthed Slaanesh. Now, when we go into Dark Elves and Drakari or Dark Eldar. In AOS, they're remnants of the Pleasure Cult who still do that stupid-ass shit, 
to extend their lives, mostly torturing people in order to vampire them, their life essence. In 40k, the Drukhari are the guys that happen to be in a city between real space and the warp, a place called the Webway, and they came to the same conclusion somehow? Now going into my problem with their personalities, I can only give a description of elves from the one thing I know about them from, and that isn't on the wiki or anything. It's from the game Vermintide. I know the elf in that game is a prick who thinks herself better than literally everyone, yells at everyone, and then is usually the first one to die because her ability is just prey. Not like how the witch hunter prays. I mean, fire an arrow, it rebounds around in a scatter shot, and you pray it actually hits something. However, I do know the Eldar's personality. The Eldar have an innate warp power, but are also very emotional. During the Dark Age of Technology and Age of Strife, humans of Earth and the solar system would show up on planets and just start existing. Then the Eldar would come around, get personally offended by this, never explain why, and commit genocides. When mankind started picking themselves back up during the Great Crusade and Unification Wars, they started shooting the Eldar from their er, literal attempt at undoing their existence. And the Eldar, some of which still had memories of the situation beforehand, got really confused as to why they were getting shot. With so many species in the galaxy in 40k, Everything is learning that hostility is the first step reaction with anyone when introduced to something that waves a weapon in your face. So the Eldar often show up to a world of people who have been shot by them, then act all Pikachu face when they're shot back. We can go into the sub-factions of Eldar too. The Exodites, the Craftworlders, and the Harlequins. Then the Drukhari too, but I'll give them a pass because that's literally their one thing. Well, it's not a pass, but it doesn't need to be explained, really. Exodites decide to fuck off long before their people destroyed their own empire. They went to other worlds, made them into garden worlds, and just chilled. Sometimes riding dinosaur- Wait, these are re a thing? I thought this was a meme. GW, make these dinosaur riding elves, please. But then shit hit the fan, and they were far enough away to survive and just devolved themselves, refusing to use some technologies because they don't want to get too lazy. Fair, fair. Why do they commit the most genocide of any faction of space elves? Exodites are religious for their dead gods. Three or four are still alive, depending on how you count. Religion is very important for the space elves. The Craftworld Eldar, also known as a Syriani, are the majority of Eldar. They essentially just go on ships and ride off to train themselves into multiple aspects of life to prevent themselves from getting comfortable. They work in what I'd call a necromancy, in order to keep their DEATH MACHINES RUNNING. They literally put their dead into monoliths and war machines to gun down, sword fight, and terminate whatever target they personally get offended by existing. They usually look at their gods as dead, because most are dead, but they still revere the dead ones and the ones they don't know are alive. But they don't really do much about it. Harlequins are just actors. They view reality of the world and the falsehood of the warp as a play that they're just actors in. They don't use spirit stones like the Exodites or Assyriani use, but they all wear masks to show a single emotion. These ones are actually cool in looks, but difficult to paint. These guys made a library in the webway, the same place the Drukhari actually have their city, 
but it's different. The city that the Harlequins have is the Black Library, which contains all the knowledge in the galaxy, which brings up some questions, but we'll not talk about that. They have similar issues as all other Spacos. There's a story about them being in the Imperial Palace, cutting through people left, right, and center, while screaming, WE COME IN PEACE! Then being confused as to why Custody slaughtered them without even a fraction of a thought. The fact that they'll randomly pick up Eldar and say, Hey, here's a mask and a job, do it or else. Making the death gesture is incredibly stupid. But that's Eldar. Well, kind of. Because they recently added another faction recently, with the company GW deciding to bring back Gilliman. The Inari, literally a death cult. There's this stupid idea that the Eldar have that when all Eldar die, their death god will be reborn and kill Slaanesh. This cult believes that if they get all their swords, the death god will still be reborn and kill Slaanesh again. We know how this story would go if GW didn't write itself into a corner, leading to a trilogy being cancelled two books in. Their leader, Ivrain, found Rabout Gilliman, somehow, put him in a life support armor, and told him that if he doesn't serve them, she'd turn off the life support, and he'd die. Big Blonde and Blue just looked at her, says no, and walks with the life support armor on, and teaches himself to not need it, slowly using it less and less. His body is still trying to rip itself apart, but he's learning to not need it for most of the day. And if Rain got confused by that, Oh, Big Blue and Blonde, why don't you want to be my slave and fight for a literal god for me? What do you mean you have an empire to take care of because your dad is halfway between dead and alive? When we go into their rules, like I stated, I don't know Warhammer Fantasy, Old World, or Age of Sigmar, or really anything about Blood Bowl other than apparently orcs and dwarves had some fun. But in 40k, they can roll a bunch of dives, dice and save them for later. A lot of their abilities let them get more of these dice. Some of their abilities let them use the dice for enemy rolls. They essentially cheat. Now, I can point out that 40k at least has an issue where the thing that's great last edition will suck this one and vice versa. So, this seems to be more of a misunderstanding of balance than anything else. I can honestly go into even more, but... It'd make more sense to talk about their the Eldar's detachments and all that when I actually make a video about Eldar. But for now, on to... God, you know how much research I had to do about this franchise? I still only have a small fraction of it, but I have enough to bitch about it. The Elder Scrolls. My first complaint is there are way too many elves. Why are there so many elves? Even the non-elves are elves. I'm pretty sure the human races are still gonna be elves. I'm looking it up and the only human race that doesn't come from Atmora are the Red Guards, who are time travelers. No joke, but this isn't bitching about them. Let's talk about the races of Myrrh, which every time I say that, I think of mermaids. How many are there? Well, of the playable, we have the alt Myrrh, also called High Elves, the Boz Myrrh, also called Wood Elves, the Dun Myrrh, also called Dark Elves, the Orsimer, also called Orcs. Why are the Orcs Elves? And why did I spell Orcs like the Warhammer ones? Then we've got other elf races that aren't playable, but show up once in a blue moon. The Maumer, also known as Sea Elves, or Tropical Elves. Then the Ailey Eld, which are Wild Elves, but are just an offshoot of High Elves. The Chimer, which seem to be the Corrupted Elves, their names mean changed ones. 
The Dwemer are also known as Deep Elves or Dwarves, and they're the ones with the most mystery around them. But their own downfall is their own stupid fault. You see their old houses all over the place, usually taken over by their former slaves. Speaking of those slaves, the Fulmer, also known as Snow Elves, which are nearly genocided by the Nords because they fucked around and found out, where then enthralled by the dwarves becoming blind. Theories go that their souls are used to power the dwarf machines. One guy remains unchanged, which brings up a question about how long elves live. But he hates the term Falmer because that describes his fallen brothers. Then we've got two more elves, which the wiki only has two references to, pointing out there's a couple of books in the games that give very little information. The Cantemeric Velothi, which the only thing known about them is that they're gone, and the Sinistral Elves, which apparently they're all left-handed and lived with Redguard before they time-traveled? Britain can also be argued as being Elves too, which is weird, they seem to be a crossbreed, primarily of High Elves and Nords, but sometimes other Elves, but sometimes other humans, but nobody knows, but maybe. But they hate everyone, but they tend to be savage, and they're not going to be touched upon in this video. How did Elves come to be? Well, there's one race of Elf we didn't talk about, the Eldmer also called the First Elves. They somehow got to Nern and decided to fuck literally everything. Not even all the humanoid races. Well, kind of. Some suggest that they also fuck the beast races, which there's a lot of too. Of course, each race has their own things they do, which we'll need to talk about. They have their own homes, they have their own quirks, they have their own personalities, most of this will be about the playable elves, but we'll dip into others. I mentioned their lifespans. This is a weird one, because most suggest that playable elves can live only about 300 years, but then there's an orc in Skyrim that it suggested is over 600 years. There's a dark elf you can find that's suggested to be 4,000 years old. There's a dwarf you can find who is at least 3,500 years old because he is the only one you can find in any game, but he's also a cyborg. There's a ton of conflicting information, so ain't nobody got a clue. But what can they do? Well, that's a list right there. High elves get a boost to most magic, seem to be able to regen magic faster, and can boost their magic regen more aggressively. Through different games, they get different bonuses, because fuck consistency. So I'll stick with Skyrim's bonuses, since that's the game most have played. High Elves are also taller than everything, meaning they move faster in that game. Wood Elves get a bonus to stealth type skills, alchemy, and light armor, making them good sneaky boys, but their culture is absolutely fucked. Their racial ability is let them force animals to help you for a minute and passively resist diseases and poisons. Dark Elves have inconsistent skill bonuses to destruction magic, alteration magic, and illusion magic. Bonuses to alchemy as well, light armor, and sneak. They also get a bonus spell, Sparks, which is essentially the fire spell everything starts with, but electric boogaloo. Passively, they resist fire, but can also activate an ability to burn everyone around them. Why? I don't know. They just light up with fire. And orcs are all about weapons and... enchanting? Orcs get bonuses to heavy armor, block, one-handed weapons, two-handed weapons, smithing, and enchanting for some reason. Everything else makes sense, but enchanting? Whatever. Their activated ability is just berserking. The screen becomes fuzzy and red, you take half damage, deal double physical damage. This apparently 
stacks with physical damage buffs, but it does not affect magic damage you deal. I don't know if it halves magic damage you take. Now, the inconsistency bothers me to fucking back. Wood elves seem to be the most understandable option along with high elves. Dark elves seem a little confused with the fire ability, and orcs got one thing that just comes out of left field. I'm certain there's a lore reason, like how their tribes are inbred so they need magic. Oh, right, yeah, you sh we should talk about each of their cultures. High elves are theocratic supremacists, which, from an anarchist idea, I am very against. And I'd like to point out that I'm Catholic. I'd be fine with Catholicism being the world's majority religion, but I am not okay with any pope that's not St. Peter the First. The humans of the world of Nern believe in another god, a tenth god, and the High Elves execute anyone who says they believe there's another deity. In Skyrim, they'll call you a liar if you come across uh, the random inquisition and tell them you don't worship the human de deity. And this has more confusion because the nation of Cyrodiil, which was originally described as a jungle, but the game Oblivion makes it a fantasy stereotype for us, so did Elder Scrolls Online, which is supposed to be centuries before Talos was even conceived? Elder Scrolls Online has a lot of inconsistencies when it comes to lore of the Elder Scrolls, though. The Cyrodiil thing is explained as Godman literally time-traveling to change Cyrodiil to a forest. Wood elves are cannibals and have stupid ideas that they can't eat vegetables at all, despite the fact they can literally talk to animals. I could understand being vegan, honestly. But they go the opposite route. They're really short, and we all remember that one fucking dude in Oblivion by Azura. If they kill it, they believe they are required by their green pack to eat it, which makes me wonder how they deal with leather armor. Dark elves are just the oh poor me type of elves, despite their default personality being aggressive towards anyone. They blew up their own home, went to the nearby nation of Skyrim, got confused as to why nobody would help them, despite the fact they enslaved literally every beast race and most human races. Orcs come from the nations that sits between several nations, and each orc stronghold is literally a family. Every woman in the family is a wife of the firstborn man, or the establishing man, which it is never really clarifies that. Women are sometimes traded around various strongholds, but every spouse has a different job, depending on what order they came around. Each one can have kids, but the men are following similar structures. You're a son of the second wife, you're a smith, and at a certain age the men are just tossed out of the house. Women have to buy their freedom. And you know what's insane? This is still just a small fraction of my problems with the elves. Most of my hatred is focused on the high elves, but I am a big supporter of freedom of speech, religion, and defending myself. Playing Skyrim, there are no good guys. Absolutely none. But let's move on to the next one, which is... The Witcher is an odd one for me, because it's got three, arguably four, versions to pull from, but I'm going to make an attempt. The books are what I tend to know best, though I did play The Witcher 3 and watch the first season of the Netflix show, haven't seen the Polish one. Anything else? Yeah, not a lot off the top of my head. So, I'm scouring the internet to get more information about them. So let's talk about these things. So apparently, elves in the Witcher might be a native species to the world, but they may have invaded the world as well through a portal. In all honesty, the history of the world itself is confusing, but they showed up on the continent and immediately started genociding the boogeymen, the lizard folk, and a few fights with dwarves as well. I'm just saying those dwarves should have finished the job. The 
elves then decided to build some cities and never build a farm, which is insane to think about. How do you have a stationary stone fortress and no farms or ranches? Oh, we prefer to work with nature. That's dumb as hell. Imagine how a society would work if it didn't know how to grow or raise its own food. Oh, actually, you can go through many native tribes of the US to look at how it ends. In genocide. Humans eventually showed up sailing from the north on the continent. What did the elves do? They decided to just book it. They ran away from the humans for some reason because they said, Oh, these aren't a danger, let's just run. Which is a really weird way of thinking. They abandoned their homes and outposts, their structures, and just fled from humans. And this was before humans became hostile. Now at this point, this seems there's several different ways the story goes, depending on if you're talking about the books, shows, or games. In the books, the elves and humans signed a priest treaty where the humans stopped expanding and the elves just dealt with it. Of course, this didn't last long as the nation of Redania decided to attack. And how did the elves react? They decided to attempt to genocide all humans and failed. They had gotten so used to running, they kept running. Their combatants couldn't combat steel, and the dwarves had to give them a hand and s say, hey, stop being stupid. The sh in the shows, depending on which one, it implies that the elves invaded the world and just fucked up royally. In the video games, it doesn't really talk about this time a whole lot. A couple bring it up, but there's mostly in relation to the elder species. Dwarves and humans had to teach the elves, who are thousands of years old, how to farm. They decided they weren't going to farm, so now they rely on more short-lived races to give them some damn bread. And during the attempt at and failed genocide, they abandoned their homes, burned them down constantly. I'll give them that at least. From a tactical perspective, it's not a bad idea, really. If they weren't made of stone and just ignored the fire. So let's talk about their culture. I'll be honest, I think it's based off Arabic style, as most artwork I see of them has the elves combat gear being primarily cloth and tabard belts and curved swords. Though descriptions also say they are naturally skilled horsemen, which I want to ask how they would raise horses without farms and ranches. When facing off against heavy armor and chain, their weapons were not suited for it. It's only suited for cloth armors. Their light weaponry couldn't crush, pierce, or split heavy metal. It only work against cloth and tearing through it. So these idiots with small hunting bows and thin blades could not handle heavy armor. How did they survive fighting dwarves? On a societal level, the elves seem to be tribal at their very base. They stay close to one another and keep with families, though in the current setting many have begun to branch out and even reproduce with other species like humans, dwarves, and gnomes. They still have a woe is me attitude. Even half breeds act like they were personally attacked by humanity. Elves also live stupid long life, giving them plenty of time to learn and to research and to discover. But you know what they do with it? They learn military tactics, learn about their enemies, learn about other people and weapons, and do absolutely nothing with it. They don't learn how to count counter siege engines, they don't figure out heavy artillery, they do nothing to adapt and get better. I think the funniest thing about them is the fact that before humanity came around, they worshipped a deity of harvest and fertility, despite having an insanely low birth rate and having no idea how to farm. Most elves are tall or short humans with pointed ears. But in this setting, they also have horse teeth. 
Okay, not exactly, but flatten your canines and remove the sharps from your molars, and you've got an elf, which means their bodies are as good as digesting meat as a deer is, which is actually weirdly good, but that's a nature video, not a fantasy one. Elves have added some things to the world, though. Makeup! And that's about it. The vain, scrawny creatures that can't eat meat and can't gain weight created cosmetics while everything was clapping their cheeks. Of course, they have to be gifted with magic, right? Well, no more than anyone else, magic in The Witcher is more of a mutation you need to be blasted in the balls in order to get. Some can utilize it naturally, but they tend to be descended from monstrous races. I think in the video game it implies that elves are descended from a monster race that could use magic naturally, but their bloodlines have mixed with so much so often that it's nearly gone, only a few being able to utilize the magics. Whether it's canon to the books, I don't know. I've not read all the books or short stories because I can't read Polish. So, what's my problems with elves in this setting? Let's go down the list. They're long-lived and do nothing with it. They start fights with random people. They are somehow afraid to fight humans despite having committed genocides. They can't learn uh, basic social creation systems like irrigation or ranching. They often start fights and lose. Their ancient enemies need to save them. Honestly, the fact that we don't see a whole lot of elves in books or games makes this a short part. But let's move on to... God, Dragon Age. I don't want to do this one. I don't hate Dragon Age, I just don't like most of what Bioware has done. I think their good games are just flukes. The original Baldur's Gate games weren't great, the Old Republic was okay, the sequel at least could run on my PCs. I just don't like Mass Effect, and let's not talk about Anthem, my heart still hurts. And yes, I will be talking about that bitch in this part, god I hate her so much. But we'll talk about her later, as later as I can. Okay, so let's talk about these little cretins. The species of elves call themselves Elvhen, which is just, god damn it, that's too on the nose. They, for some reason, have a biological memory of their early days. They remember actually walking and talking with their own damn gods. I know. They're absolutely there, but I hate it when settings do that. It brings up some bullshit questions as to why doesn't everyone believe in them. Whatever, I'll shove that under the rug despite how much it bothers me. These elves apparently live happy lives praying daily to these divines, giving them sacrifices and offerings, and just being happy as they did not age or deteriorate. Now, if they live forever like the this claims, but their minds did not falter, how do their minds not overload? Oh, they lost a city apparently, but nobody knows where it is, what it was like, or anything about it, so human scholars just think it might be the only place of note because they can't find shit else. They actually l lose cities, but they can remember a time before any of them existed. Apparently, they made contact with dwarves and were totally best friends with them. Wait, why are dwarves afraid of elven sun gods? There was never a conflict with uh, dwarves, but the dwarves are terrified of the elf god of vengeance and the sun. Lord, that sounds like a grand friend to have. One that didn't do anything to cause problems at all and make dwarves afraid to leave their underground homes and terrified of the damn sky. Yeah, these elves are great. Totally worth making allies with. Then came the humans. These 
Dim elves decided to call them quicklings because their short lives make them do things quickly. They completely avoid humans, retreat to their tiny nation to the north, got surprised that the humans expanded so quickly despite the condescending name given to them, and then got sick because they refused to adapt by exposing themselves. Now, an expanding people will come knocking one day with weapons and force you out of your home. Eventually, hum the humans of Tevinter Imperium came around and did just that, and again, these thousands of year old elves, who have totally never killed anyone, couldn't defend themselves, despite there being dragons in the area. According to the elves, human invaders enslaved demons and dragons before attacking. How does that happen? Who enthralls a literal force of evil and thinks things will be hunky-dory. God, this empire then enslaved the elves and their gods fuck off or something, lord. This is the dumbest shit I've ever heard of. How about their personalities? Elves have to be pretty good spirits since they seem to be peace-loving hippies, right? Well, who's seen this little shit-stained lower life form of an annoying ass, no good, mentally stunted forsaken hick. Yeah, she's one of the more tolerable elves in the setting. Companion elves can be okay. Solus is okay if he weren't a pathological liar and a cytal maniac. Okay, what about other elves? Huh, looks like we've got a high and mighty mage who thinks himself better than you, Another elf who wants to ride you like a horse on a ranch. Another who thinks he's edgier than everyone. Hmm. Okay, so what about the NPCs? They can't be all bad. And they hate you as a base reaction. And if you help them out and do exactly what they want, they still don't like you. They'll just sell you absolute shit that ain't that good. So, hey, why not? Hell, your companion elves will literally just abandon you if you sneeze in the wrong area. No, I'm not joking. I lost Solus twice because I told him, hey, they didn't know, don't kill them. Apparently, I'm the bad guy for trying to help people. God, I hate these people. Well, if they're not raised by elves, well, we got this one. Sarah. Red Jenny. I hate her so much, unbearable, stuck up her own ass, impossible to teach, and capable of learning, and she hates everything that isn't self-destructive. This woman is unbearable. Maybe she's an outlier, but she's our only example, so she'll fucking do. Honestly, I give a lot of hate to this character, but she started yelling at me for rescuing a dwarf in one of the DLCs. She deserves whatever suffering she gives herself. I tried to help her. I tried to teach her. <sighs> Moving on. So, what do Elves in Dragon Age get when you decide to play them? Well, the first two games give you a bonus to magic, a plus two willpower and magic, which essentially is just a super bonus to magic casting. Yeah, in this setting, at least they're consistent, and their lore states that they are naturally gifted with magic, despite losing to rock throwers multiple times. So what about Dragon Age 2? Well, you can't play as elves in this game, you're the human hawk, so we gotta go with the companions and the enemy stats. They get a plus one to dexterity and cunning, so they're archers almost exclusively. Okay, that's a lot of stupid. What about Inquisition, the Dragon Age game I've played? Well, they get a bonus to defense against ranged attacks, both archery and magic. Wait, what? They're resistant to being far away. That's dumb as fuck. I guess it's supposed to represent the archery and the magic skill, but... Why not do it in another way? And let's take another step on their personalities and history. 
they still believe that they are the ones to save the world. Despite the fact they can't do anything, they will blame humanity for the problems on the world despite having a genetic memory and being able to fix the issues and they do nothing with it. These guys remember when their grandpa was enslaved and they remember when their great grandma talked to literal gods and they can't seem to fight off fucking cavemen. Oh, we were sick and dying. You have genetic ma magic, you brick. God, I hate elves. Let's get on with... Huh, I'm done. I'm hitting close to an hour for this, been recording all this for about six months now, been kidnapped several times by several people, but I'm not even a fraction of the way through with my complaints about elves. I'll be honest, I'm going to do this every year for April Fool's Day. Maybe I'll start working on the next year's today. Have a two-hour video about how much I hate elves and why? Could actually be fun. Would be funny to make it longer every time, really. So, what do you think? Any more good reasons to hate elves if... I'm um, to be frank, if you're going to defend the existence of elves in any sort of fiction, you can find the door. There will be no elf defense in this household. So, what elves will I be talking about next year? Maybe Shadowrun ones? Perhaps Dungeons and Dragons? Probably in multiple pieces in that alone? Lord of the Rings will definitely be brought up. How about, why do you hate elves? Give me a specific settings elf and tell me why I should hate them. Don't get me wrong, elves are hated at default, especially things that totally aren't elves but are definitely elves. I'm looking at you, Elder Scrolls and Warhammer. You know what? If you want to defend elves in the comment section, I'm not going to delete your comment. In fact, I want you all to fight in the comments. Defend your elves, attack elves, create a shield for your opinion. If you are defending those knife-eared bastards, you're wrong. That's a default. My opinion is the only one that matters. Even if it didn't matter, I'm still right. Elves suck. Seriously, I'm right. Elves suck. If you don't believe me, maybe I'll restart this whole video from the beginning. Actually, you know what? Nah, I won't do that. Would be funny to just loop this video and see how long people would actually watch it. Maybe in the future, maybe. You know what? Let me ask you this. What sort of things would you like to s me to talk about on the next Thing I Hate About Elves video for next year? Perhaps elf subspecies? Things like the Wyverians from Monster Hunter? Perhaps giving a score to the actual elves on their hate level? Either way, this will be an April Fool's Day tradition. Maybe I'll do a specific video about Warhammer Eldar alone in five years. But that's enough bitching about elves for one super long video. So I'll go and shove off.